Hello and welcome to Army News. In our newscast, we have stories on the air defense and anti-tank system from both Suffield and Wainwright, and a report on the Fall Expo in Gagetown. Ah! We also have a soldier profile from Petawawa, but we begin our show with news of a brand new piece of equipment for the Army. If you've noticed a military vehicle resembling a Chevrolet Silverado, you haven't been dreaming. When the new vehicle arrived, Sergeant Cedric Hamel was there. Some units will have to wait another few years before receiving their G-Wagons. In the meantime, to replace the obsolete Iltis, there are the Milcots. We hear about this being a transition vehicle. Why this vehicle and what is its objective? When the Iltis was declared obsolete, there was a period of time in which the government invited bids for the purchase of its replacement. Uh, in the meantime, this is where the transitional aspect comes into play. You know, we, the reserve units, along with the regular units, will use this vehicle until the G-Wagons are eventually integrated into the various units. Gradually, G-Wagons will be integrated into the unit, then the Milcots will be queued up to become logistical support vehicles. Uh, the Milcots are based on the Silverado. Unlike the Iltis, they're equipped with an automatic transmission. In terms of teaching, the advantage of this vehicle is that it'll force drivers to make more use of their mirrors when reversing and performing various driving maneuvers uh, than they did when driving the Iltis. It's a vehicle that I enjoy driving. It adapts easily to all types of terrain. There will be three versions of this vehicle, the standard or basic model like this one, the military police model, and a model for line workers. For Army News, I'm Cédric Amel in Valcartier. The evolution of the ADATs is now complete. The air defense and anti-tank systems conducted missile firing trials in Suffield recently, and I had the opportunity to be there firsthand. More than 100 soldiers and media from across Canada were forced to withstand heavy rains and strong winds at Canadian Forces Base Suffield as they learned to operate one of the Army's most lethal battlefield weapon system. The air defense and anti-tank system soldiers from the 4th Air Defense Regiment had the opportunity to fire a handful of missiles during exercise perfect kill. The ADATs uh, can engage targets out to 8 kilometers, and that uh, allows it to uh, be a potent factor on uh, today's battlefield. Sergeant Robert Francis knows soldiers are excited about the ADAT's new role. With the new modifications that we're having, uh, the roles that the Army's going to be taking on in the near future, in the future, um, looks like the ADATs should have a place with it and it should be an interesting job for uh, soldiers. The ADATs will fit nicely into transformation. As the Army evolves in the Army transformation, what they're looking at doing is incorporating the ADAT system into, the, into a direct fire unit. And what they're uh, testing now, and we're going to go through a number of uh, 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 test trial exercises over the next year, is incorporating uh, ADATs directly into a unit based on the Lord Strathcona's Force, uh, Royal Canadians. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend a couple of hundred billion dollars of the taxpayers' money and totally transform that system. So beyond being an outstanding uh, sensor system and anti-tank system and air defense system, we're going to take that into the future. We believe that once we actually get to that point, what we're actually seeing is a new type of combat system, which is really going to take us into the Army of tomorrow. So the air defense anti-tank system is an extremely important part of the Army's transformation. It is important to note that equipment is just a very small portion of that process. Sergeant Craig Reed, Army News, Suffield. Hi, I'm Wayne Gretzky and you're watching Army News. Our next story deals with 41 Canadian Brigade Group Simulated Unmanned Aerial Vehicle, or SIM UAV. The small remote controlled aircraft allowed the reserve unit to better practice its skills in surveillance, intelligence, target acquisition, and reconnaissance. Sergeant Mike Vandenbroek has more. The Army is investing a lot of money into unmanned aerial vehicles under Army transformation for long range air reconnaissance. But what about the ground commanders in the field during a battle? Well, Sixth Intelligence Company for 41 Canadian Brigade Group has a cheap, simple solution. The idea is to use a small remote control plane fitted with a GPS and digital camera to take pictures that are downloaded once the plane lands. Private Roger Kuras from Sixth Intelligence Company explains where the concept came from and its purpose. It came from 41 Brigade. They uh, wanted a UAV. They sent it down to my unit. My unit approached me because I have the engineering background. I put in a good four months of pretty much solid full-time work to get this done. 
Right now, the intent is uh, just give our unit itself another sensor in the uh, I Star matrix. So on exercise, our unit can actually go out, capture imagery, and have something more valuable to do on the exercise and produce an, uh, an intelligence product to provide to uh, commanders on exercise. Private Curess is the electronics parts of the UAV team. For expertise in the field of model plane building and flying, the help of a 25-year veteran in the model plane world was enlisted. Mr. Peter Carey tells us about the plane and how the vehicle will do its job. The plane itself is very basic. It's, there's, there's nothing uh, extraordinary or uh, unique about its construction. Uh, just followed basic principles and, of aerodynamics and, and uh, made a simple plane which has a reasonably decent cargo or payload and flies fast enough to do the job. Although this is only a prototype for 41 CBG, the project will continue and it shows that the Army Reserve soldiers have a wealth of non-military experience to offer the Canadian Forces. Sergeant Mike Vanbrook, Airfield 21, Wainwright, Alberta. If you are interested in recreation and after work activities, you'll like our next story. Sergeant Todd Berry reports from Base Gagetown on this year's annual Fall Expo. It is time once again for soldiers and families to find just the right activity to do during the long fall and winter months, which is just around the corner. This is our annual Fall Expo. What we do at this time is we try and bring all the community organizations and groups, specifically the base clubs, the local area community groups, and then the other area, some even commercial groups, into one location so that members newly posted into Gagetown have a chance to find out what we have to offer. I'm an advanced sales leader for Avon Canada, and we thought it was a great time to be able to present Avon to the people in our area, so for them to buy and to sell. It's an easy way to sign up your kids for everything that you're, you, know, you plan on signing them up for throughout the year, because it's all concentrated here. Over 1,200 people in attendance were entertained with pipe and drum music and a martial arts demonstration by the JVK Taekwondo Club. If you would like more information on activities in your area, contact your local Military Family Resource Centre or their Personal Support Programs Director. For Army News, I'm Sergeant Todd Berry. Today's Army is busier than ever, and that means our troops are equally busy. The present deployments around the world affect not only our soldiers, but affect their families as well. Sergeant Kevin Galena had a chance to interview Sergeant Brent Krellen and his family from Petawawa before, during, and after his deployment to Afghanistan. Soldiers and their families have many obstacles to cross throughout their career. Okay, turn it off, folks. By far, one of the biggest they encounter is when a member deploys to an overseas location to take part in a peacekeeping mission. We are about to follow one of our own infantry soldiers from Canadian Forces Base Petawawa on a tour to Afghanistan. A seasoned veteran of overseas missions, Master Corporal Krellin anticipates the stresses that he and his family will endure while he is away. This will be the sixth time that Master Corporal Brent Krellin leaves his family behind to fulfill his duties as a soldier in the Canadian Army. I just, uh, I wish uh, the families back here are safe, uh, everything's well. I love you. Oh. You be a good boy, okay? Okay. okay. I just hope we have a, a safe tour over there, everybody comes back alive and safe and sound. As the family says their goodbyes, and Master Corporal Crullin embarks on the first portion of his mission, life continues for his wife Kathy and their two young sons, Bradley and Matthew. He's doing good. He's doing his job that he's supposed to be doing. He's more appreciative of what, we, what he's got home now of after what's the incidents that, that have happened. And he just, he can't wait to come home. Well, it's, it's different. This is my sixth tour overseas. So, I mean, it's kind of nice. It's in a different spot. Normally we go to Bosnia, but uh, I don't know. I, I haven't been out a whole lot. Uh, unfortunately, with my job, it keeps me in camp most of the time. So I haven't had a whole lot of interaction with the people. You're up in the morning, you do PT. I don't eat breakfast much anymore. But uh, no, we're here at work at 7.30 every morning. Um, the normal things that go on with uh, stores, we order supplies and, you know, just 
fill ad reps and stuff like that, make sure that the, the troops have everything that they require when they go out. After that, we usually spend, I'm here till probably about eight o'clock every night. Uh, we've got guys going out on leave every day, so we're out issuing, uh, bringing in the weapons or uh, taking, them, taking them in or back, depending on if the guys are coming or going. Don't be silly, we're just going in. Pretend they're not there, remember? The six month mission, finally reaching its end, newly promoted Sergeant Crullin is on his way home to Kathy and the boys, who are anxiously awaiting his return. Uh, well, it's, it's there, I'm here, you know, I'm happy to be home. I think we made a difference over there. Uh, there's still a lot of work to do, but compared to when I first got there, it's, it's been really, uh, really good. In the coming weeks, Brent and Kathy will reacquaint themselves and catch up on the events of the last six months. As for Bradley and Matthew, they will now have their dad back at home and in their lives. Until Sergeant Brent Crullin is called to duty once again. For more information on your Army and other stories Army News has covered, visit your website at army.gc.ca. This is Army News, your news for your Army, and we would like to hear from you. We welcome your feedback. Please visit your website at army.gc.ca. With that, you're up to date. Coming up next are some scenes from Camp Julian in Kabul, Afghanistan. We thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week. For Army News, I'm Sergeant Craig Reed.